Got three kings up here, all right? Lord willing, soon to be in the kingdom. So we're just a work in progress. The beloved brother, I'm, I'm off your ice from your howder, and the beloved brother, your howder. So we're going to go ahead and get ready to bring it So how are your howder? Excuse me. We're going to go ahead and get ready to bring it out. So we're just trying to work towards those crowns. So kings to be, I don't want to rock this up. We're not kings yet, we're still in captivity. We're striving for that crown, that crowning, for the kingship, to be priests of the Lord. Before we get started, we're gonna face the east. All praises to Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Hashem, Kadash. Double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles, a great millstone. Much respect and honor to the brothers doing the work in truth and sincerity risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. Much love to the beloved ladies of the hopeful elect of the house of David that are listening and learning in meekness and humility like a lady. <coughs> All right, so we title of today's lesson is Renewing Our Vows. Because we're married to Yahweh by Shem, Yahweh Shai. So we're going to go ahead and bring it up. Right? I'm going to start off with Psalms 39. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 39, verse 11. When thou with rebukes dost correct, dost correct men for iniquity, thou makest his beauty to consume away like a moth. Surely every man is vanity, Salah. See, so when, when he's reading that, the first thing comes to mind is the daughter of Zion losing her beauty, being cast down from grace, and the white robe that we had, which represented purity, is filthy, it's dirty. <clears throat> Beautiful. The Book of Shah, you don't mind reading that again? Come, this is the Book of Psalms 39, verse 11 from the top. When thou with rebukes dost correct men, for iniquity, thou makest his beauty to consume away like a moth. Surely every man is vanity. Salah. Beautiful. Come on. <clears throat> All right, verse 12. Hear my prayer, O Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, and give ear on to my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears, for I am a stranger with thee and a sojourner as all my fathers were. I am a what? I, I am a sojourner as all my fathers were. See, so we became strangers, cut off from the covenant. See that? The marriage contract with the heavenly father. So now we're sojourning in a, a state of being brought down low. That's beautiful. Wow. Psalms 40, of the shot. Psalms chapter 40, verse one, <laughs> and it reads, I waited patiently for the Lord Yahweh, and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. Heard my what? Heard my cry. cry. A damsel in distress. See how the scriptures go together? So now we're justified to be delivered. We're being attacked by our enemies, by an aggressor, an oppressor. Read that again, Book of the Shop. Once more. Psalms chapter 40, verse 1, and it reads, I waited patiently for the Lord your house, and he inclined to me and heard my cry. Verse 2, and it reads, he brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of a merry clay, and set my feet upon a rock. So he's going to save his tender and delicate woman. The captive daughter of Zion were crying aloud. 
in distress. Come on. And establish my goons. And what? Establish my goons. So now we have a way back to our husband. Although we're being ravaged, although we're being attacked, afflicted, we are in distress. So we have not compromised our integrity. Come on. Verse 3, and it reads, and he hath put a new song in my mouth. Mm. Even praise unto our power. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord your house. Verse 4. So now we're grounded in this doctrine, this new song. So there's a celebration that occurs after being released from captivity, from bondage, from affliction. That starts with this doctrine. Come on. Verse 4. And it reads. Blessed is the man, Salah. Blessed is that man that maketh the Lord Yahweh his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. So we don't respect the oppressor, the aggressor. Now what does the law say? Let's go to Job 20 and 6. So the law says that that aggressor has to be put to death. So we're going to go into that aggressor. So the damsel in distress is crying out to be delivered. So we're able to maintain our integrity and loyalty for our husband. So we are not guilty because we have a savior. Let's go to Job 20 and 6. Job chapter 20, verse 6. And it reads, though his excellency mount up to the heavens, and his head reach until the clouds. Yep. Verse 7. And it reads, Yet he shall perish forever like his own dung. He shall what? Perish forever like his own dung. So our rapist, our attacker, the culprit, is going to be put to death. Esau, Edom. Come on. They which have seen him shall say, Where is he? Verse 8. And it reads, he shall fly away as a dream and shall not be found. Now that's spiritual because America is called the American dream, which has become the Israelites' nightmare. Come on. <laughs> Ye, he shall be chased away as a vision of the night. Verse 9, and it reads, the eye also which saw him shall see him no more. Neither shall his place anymore behold him so he's got a warrant out for his arrest he is guilty as charged kidnapping sodomy rape incest witchcraft forcible assault so esau edom must be put to death in order for the captive daughter of zion to be released from prison. This is a beautiful song. So we're undefiled, even though we've been violated because we're crying out through our loyalty in this truth. Jeremiah 3, Book of Kashaw. It's the book of Jeremiah chapter three from the top. They say if a man put away his wife and she go from him and become another man's, shall he return onto, onto her again? Shall not that land be greatly polluted, mm. but thou hast played the harlot with many lovers, yet return again to me, saith Yahweh Ba'ashim, Yahweh Shai. Uh, lift up thine eyes onto the high places, yep. and see where thou hast not been lying with, in the ways hast thou sat for them, as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms and with thy wickedness. So the I'm going to speak in dark sayings, but I'm going to go into it, what it means. So the captive daughter of Zion, the Israelites, have had trains ran on us through spiritual fornication. Then you say, what is that Arabia again? Islam. What's that again, please? Come. It says, uh, in the ways hast thou sat for them as the Arabian in the wilderness, and thou hast polluted the land with thy whoredoms, and with thy wickedness. So we're bowing down to a rock. You see, Islam, the dragons of Arabia, 
they took us down too. So how in the hell are you a damn Muslim? Some of you jakes need to wake the hell up. So we are polluted with the spiritual fornication. And if we're not crying to get out of it or turning back to our marriage vows, then we are guilty as charged. Or we are agreeing to be violated, to be ravaged. Then we're gonna die with this devil, Esau. So should we be put away? Let's see. Let's go to Romans 7. We're gonna go to the top. One through four, please. Romans. I'm moving fast on purpose. Bear with us. Romans 7. Romans chapter 7, verse 1. And it reads, Now ye not brethren, Salah, no ye not brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law have dominion over a man as long as he liveth. So the, the contract, the covenant, is not done away with. The law, statutes, and commandments. Anybody teaching that is a liar. Come on. Verse 2, and it reads, For the women which have an husband is bound by the Lord to her husband. Pay attention to this. So Are, long, one moment. Are we worthy of death? Take your time. Read that again. Chapter 7, verse 2, and it reads, For the women which have an husband is bound by the Lord to her husband so long as he lives. But if the husband be dead, say what? If the husband be dead, come on, she is loose from the law of her husband. So there had to be the shedding of blood through Yahweh Shai to release the damsel from a death sentence. Come on, verse three, and it reads. So then, if while her husband liveth, mm. she be married to another man, mm -mm. she should be caught in a dutch. Hey, what? An adultery. Come on. But if her husband be dead, woo, she is free from the Lord. See? So there has to be a shedding of blood to balance the universal scales of the law. Romans 8, please. Boba Kasha. Romans 8 and 1. So this is a high level education. This is not a little a gang, a backyard hip talk in the backyard somewhere at a barbecue or sitting outside a liquor store holding a 40 ounce of malt liquor talking about the bible sit your ass down somewhere hat turned backwards but y'all making me laugh man missing all your damn teeth bugged out <laughs> yeah with a damn black and mouth hanging out be quiet bug out go to romans 8 brother. this is the book of romans chapter 8 verse 1 and it reads this there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Uh oh, no what? No condemnation <clears throat> to them which are in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai. Uh huh. Who walk not after the flesh, yep. but after the spirit. Mm -hmm. For the law of the spirit of life in Hamashiach Yahweh Shai have made me free mm -mm. from the law of sin and death. There it is. So now we got to lay back to the Heavenly Father our husband through a mediator. What happens when you have a bad relationship? Well, we're gonna set you up to talk to the mediator. So now we got a bridge back other than the death sentence. This is a heavy level of understanding. The spirit is in alignment. The universe is in alignment with the spirit. So the most high put his spirit through his son on his anointed ones to be redeemed from the penalty of breaking the law. Romans 5 and 8, please. And Brother um, Amoff, if you don't mind holding 1 Corinthians 7, we're going to read 10 and 11. Romans 5, verse 8, brother. Romans chapter, chapter 5, mm -hmm. verse 8. Yep. And it reads, But God our power commanded his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Yahweh Hamashiach died for us. There it is again. So now there has to be a way back because we broke the original covenant with our husband. So there has to be an amendment, a shedding of blood. Come on. 
verse 9, and it reads much more than being now justified by his blood. By his what? By his blood. Yeah, come on. We should be saved from wrath. Through. So we are saved from the penalty of the law, which is death. I mean, this is, when you're in the spirit, it begins to sound like a beautiful symphony, an orchestra. Read that again, Mubakashaw King, Romans 5 and 9. It's all good. Romans chapter 5, verse 9, once more. And it reads, much, much more than being now justified by his blood, we should be saved from wrath through him. Come on. Verse 10, and it reads, for if when we were enemies, we were reconciled by God our power by the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. Being what? Saved by his life. So we are reconciled. So now there is a reconciliation, which is repairing old wounds, establishing a friendship with the most high. So we are reconciled to him. 1 Corinthians 7 and 10. Go book the shop. It's the book of 1 Corinthians 7. I'll start off at verse 10. And on to the marriage I command, yet not I, but Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, let not the wife depart from her husband. So we're still married by a contract. Come on. But and if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be recon reconciliated to her husband. To be what? Reconciliated to her husband. Come on. But it, verse 12, but to the rest speak I, not, not the Lord, if any brother have a wife that believeth not, and she be pleased to dwell with him, let him not put, let him not put her away. There it is. So now we have an opportunity to stay in this contract. Why? Let's go back to Romans 5 and 10. Romans chapter 5, once more, verse 10. And it reads, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God, our power by the death of his son. See, we were reconciled back. So this mediator is an intercessor. So he is the one that bridges the gap. Why? Brother, if you don't mind, King Amoth, uh Jeremiah 17 and 4, please. So there is a bridge that must be crossed to get in the good graces with the Father. So we need an intercessor because the Most High is a man that he should not lie. The penalty for adultery is death. That's right. So we got to have an intercessor. When you break that down, it's a mediator. So why do we need a bridge back to the Father? But we can shop. There's the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17, verse 4. And thou, even thyself, shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. Cut off from our heritage. Cut off from the mercy and grace temporarily. So we were put away issued a bill of divorce that's in our law so if we study the heavenly father we can study what he's going to do to us because he's a man of his word jeremiah 3 and 8 public shop jeremiah chapter 3 verse 8 and it reads and i saw when for all the causes whereby backsliding israel committed a dark committed what? A daughter. Come on. I have put her away. I have what? Put her away. Let's go. And given her a bill of divorce. So we were cut off from our heritage. Black, nigger, spick, negro, gentile, strangers, jigaboo. See? Tonto, sambo. So now we're making amends to rekindle the fire with our husband. Okay, bring it out, king. Uh, same book of brothers in Jeremiah 3, verse 14 and 15. Turn, O backsliding children, say if Yahweh Bahashim Yahweh Shai, for I am married unto you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, 
and I will bring you to Zion, and I will give you pastors according to mine heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding, man. That's beautiful. Come. See, so when we see this, the pastors are a what? A tabernacle, a congregation. So the bride is being led back into the house of his glory and grace and mercy. So we're being invited back through grace, eternal love made with his bride. So this is heavy, but there has to be a shedding of blood to erase the penalty of death through the shedding of suffering and affliction of Hamashiach. Hebrews 9, please. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 19. Uh -huh. And it reads, For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and heist and sprinkled both the book and all the people. So we're reading about a schoolmaster teaching us the fundamentals of how the universe operates under the most high. There must be a shedding or a sprinkling of blood to consummate a marriage and to keep that marriage pure. So that's why we were killing goats and rams, but it was not a perfect sacrifice. Come on. Verse 20, and it reads, this is the blood of the testament which God our power have enjoyed unto you. Wait a minute, what was that contract made with? The Israelites. So how in the hell can the other nations pick up this book and relate to it? Come on. Verse 21, and it reads, Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. So the tabernacle, we're being invited back into the house of the Lord, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So the Most High has not permanently cut off the daughter of Zion. Come on. Verse 22, and it reads, and almost all things are by the Lord purged with blood, mm -hmm. and without shedding of blood, there's no remission. Now, we got, we got to take our time. So when that damsel was penetrated by her husband, that's sex, cutting the hymen. Sex comes from sextos, which means to cut. There is a what that prevents her from being put to death. Blood is sprinkled on the white cloth. So that is a token of preservation. Come on. Verse 23, and it reads, it was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these. But the heavenly things themselves were better sacrifices than these. And what? Than these. We got better sacrifices than these. Come on. Verse 24. And it reads, For Yahweh, Shai HaMashiach is not entered into the holy places made with hands. Mm -hmm which are the figures of the truth, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of the Most High for us. Now, this is heavy because it's telling you that we got to replicate what's done in the heavens. See, this is a heavenly uh, spiritual wisdom. So it does not suffice for us to be able to save ourselves or come up with our own salvation. We gotta have the buy-in or the signature, the decree from the Father. He is the ultimate authority. Come on. <coughs> this is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 25. But if a man find a debt, it's like it, but if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field and the man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lie with her shall die. See that? So that man that violated the daughter of Zion is Esau Edom. You see, I know you can see this thing here. So the culprit, the aggressor, the rapist, the murderer is Esau Edom. Read that again, King. That's the book of Deuteronomy 22, verse 25 from the top. But if a man find a betrothed damsel in the field, 
and the man force her and lie with her, then the man only that lie with her shall die. So who's crying out in distress being violated by this cave animal? The elect right. is doing that. But the two thirds are lying in bed with this cave beast. Come on, Mubi Kishak, another one right after that. Come, verse 26. Uh -huh. But unto the damsel uh -oh. that shall do nothing, mm -hmm. there is in the damsels no sin worthy of death. Uh -huh. For as when a man riseth against his neighbor and slayeth him, even so is this matter. So the field is the world. The captive daughter of Zion is dispersed and have been violated and held captive. Come on. Verse 27. Uh huh. For he said, so like, for he found her in the field. In the what? For he found her in the field. Uh huh. And the betrothed damsel cried. Did what? And the betrothed damsel cried. Come on. And there was none to save her. Woo! Let's go. Another one. Verse 28. Uh huh. If a man find a damsel that is a virgin, which is not betrothed, and lay hold on her, and lie with her, and they both be found. And yup, and finish at 29, please. Come. Then the man that lie with her shall give unto the damsel's father fifty shekels, it's like a fifty shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife, because he have humbled her, he may not put her away all his days. Now you have a two-thirds sect. If you don't mind, King Deuteronomy 15 and 15. And we're gonna stop at 17. So the two-thirds are gonna comply. They're gonna take this man's phallus symbol. So they are in bed in compliance with lying down with the beast. You gotta see this thing. The brother eloquently went through the precepts. So the two thirds are going to comply. They're not crying out. They wanna be able to buy and sell. They love their master. Verse 15. Yep. Deuteronomy 15 verse 15. Uh-huh. And thou shalt remember that thou was a bondman in the land of Egypt. Uh-huh. And Yahweh, thy power, redeemed thee. Therefore, I command thee this day. It's so like, therefore, I command thee this thing today, and it shall be. If he say unto thee, I will not go away from thee, because he loveth thee, and thine house, because he is well with thee. So the two thirds is like we got 501c3. Mm -hmm. You Hebrew Israelites need to be quiet. You messing with our money. Our master taking care of us, our pimp. We're getting our needs met. So be quiet, Hebrew Israelites. Come on. Verse 17. Uh-huh. Then thou shalt take an awl yep. and thrust it through his ear onto the door. And he shall be thy servant forever. Uh-huh. And also unto thy maid servant thou shalt do likewise. So this is not a damsel in distress. I know you see it. So you're worthy of death complying with this savage monster, Sleazy E. You love it. He's getting ready to penetrate you with his digital O, his digital tracking device. So you have willful consent with your pimp. Come on, Isaiah 63, Bubba Kishaw. Isaiah <coughs> chapter 63, verse 1. And it reads, who is this? that coming from Edom mm. with dyed garments from Boston. Yep. This that is glorious in his apparel, uh -huh. traveling in greatness of his strength. I mm. love it. Come on. Mm. Ah, they're speaking righteous, mighty to say. So we got to envision this. He's pissed off. Imagine walking in and your wife is being ravaged by a cave animal or a savage street thug. And she's screaming, honey, savior, deliver me. This man is trying to take me, but I'm loyal to you, my love. Save me. In my distress, I cried out. And then the heat, oh, when the floods came in, was delivered. Read that again, Bubba Kishaw. <laughs> Isaiah, yep. chapter 63. Verse one, once more, and it reads, who is this that coming from evil with dyed garments from Boston? This that is glorious in his apparel, 
traveling in greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, mighty to save. Mighty to do what? Mighty to save. That's beautiful. Let me read. <coughs> Let me read this. The book of Psalms, chapter 18, verse 6. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and cried unto my power. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry came before him, even into his ears. So the captive, calmly and delicate daughter of Zion is anointed. So she is faithful and is going to cry in distress. So you have a set of anointed on the earth today. They're not teaching this in the churches. Elect. But you also have a multitude of those that are going to consent to whoredom, to be violated. Let's go to Ezekiel 23, book of the shop. Ezekiel 23. So these whoredoms run deep. I mean, we had trains ran on us. Buddhism, Hinduism, Islam, Confucianism, Kemetic, all types of craziness going on. So this is a mixture of lovers of different spiritual fornication, adultery. See, Ezekiel 23, King. Ezekiel 23, verse 1. Yep. And it reads, The word of the Lord Yahweh came again unto me, saying, verse 2, mm -hmm. Son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother, verse 3, and they committed whoredoms in Egypt. They committed whoredoms in their youth. They were their breast pressed. And, and they, and there, they bruised the teats of their virginity. So we are torn by these lovers. We're defiled. So the land is defiled, which represents the Lord's inheritance, his children, his daughter, his wife. Come on. Verse 4. Uh-huh. And it reads, and the names of them were Ahola, yep. the elder. Come on. And Ahola by her sister. Uh-huh. And they were mine. Northern Kingdom and Southern Kingdom committed these treacherous acts. Come on. And they bear sons and daughters. Thus were their names. Samaria is Ohala, their names. Come on. Samaria is Ohala, and Jerusalem, Ohala Ba. So Northern Kingdom dwelled primarily in an area called Samaria, which was taken down by the uh, ancient Assyrians. In the Southern Kingdom, their footprint was in the South, Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. So he's using poetic names to describe the Northern and southern kingdom divided. Come on. Verse 5. Uh huh. And it reads <laughs> And Ohala played the harlot when she was mine. And she died it on her left. On the Assyrians, her name. See that? Keep going. Verse 6. And it reads Which were clothed with blue captains and rulers, mm -hmm. all of them desirable young men, horsemen riding upon horses. Verse 7, and it reads, Thus she committed her whoredoms with them, yep. with all of them that were the chosen men of Assyria, and with all of whom she dotted, with all their idols she defiled herself. There's the answer right there. So he's poetically describing spiritual fornication, adultery. So now we are defiled. Now we're worthy of death. And now we need a way out of this death sentence. All that. And beloved, come on, uh, Ezekiel 16 and 29, please. <coughs> the Most High is very poetic. William Shakespeare was a Jake, by the way. And from what I read, the tribe of Judah, William Shakespeare, a lot of the images have a caveman that's showing you all these 
in-depth, beautiful writings. That was a Jake that wrote these, these letters, not Esau. But he whitewashed William Shakespeare. I don't see any comments. Something ain't right here. Usually comments are just flowing on there. Anyway. Oh, okay. Uh, this is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 16, verse 29. Yep. Thou hast moreover multiplied thy fornication in the land of Canaan unto Chaldea, and yet thou was not satisfied herewith. How weak is thine heart, saith Yahweh power, seeing thou doest all these things, the work of an imperious, whorish woman, hmm. and, that thou, and that thou buildest thine... What's that up? And that thou buildest thy imminent place in the head of every way, and makest thine high place in every street, and has not been as in harlot, and that thou scornest higher. But as a wife that committed adultery, uh -huh. which taketh strangers instead of her husband. There it is right there. See, so we, many of us just openly opened up to this, these abominations. Willful intent. Willfully laying down with the Assyrians, the Canaanites, the Egyptians, the Babylonians. So this is where there is no repentance according to the law or worthy of death. When the wife and the perpetrator agree with this bond, which is an abomination. I know you see it. So that is the law. So there is an infraction when there is no cry out for our Savior. But that means we got to have a Savior. For you Old Testament only bug outs that don't believe in the Savior, you're going to die with your lover. They, they need to uh, break down uh, Isaiah 53. Yes, exactly. Exactly. These men are bug out and the Spirit is not on them. Who was wounded for our transgressions? and led like a lamb to the slaughter. These men are bugged out. Where were you at, King? <laughs> okay, yep, Ezekiel 23. Ezekiel chapter 23, verse eight. And it reads, neither left she her whoredoms brought from Egypt, mm -hmm. for in her youth they lay with her, and they bruised the breast of her virginity, and pour their whoredom upon her. One moment, King Revelations 11 and 8. Now, when you listen to this, it's easy to say, well, that was in the old days. That was ancient Egypt. That was ancient Assyria. Well, guess what? We came over to America, or which goes back to the Greek, Egyptos, which means bondage in ships, according to Deuteronomy 28 and 68. So now we're in a spiritual melting pot. The ancient Kemetic worships are here. Canaan night. Or uh, the ancient Assyrian worships are here in America. The ancient Egyptian worships are here. So this is a melting pot of idolatry and paganism. The ancient gods of Greece, Rome, are here and their statues in Washington, D.C. So yes, it happened in ancient Egypt and Assyria. But everything comes back through a reincarnation process. The spirit regenerates and comes back. So now we're in Babylon the Great. All these ancient kingdoms rolled in one. Come on, King, read that last precept again. Ezekiel 23. Once more, verse 8. And it reads, Neither left she her whoredoms brought from Egypt, for in her youth they lay with her, and they bruised the breast of her virginity yeah. and poured their whoredom upon her. So we are defiled by our lovers, our pimps. They use and abuse us. They told us they love us. If you just worship our gods, we're going to put you up in government housing, section eight. We're going to give you child support. We're going to give you alimony but you have to put away the sons of Jacob. And we're gonna come and inspect your home. You better have the golden retriever with blonde hair and blue eyes hanging up and kick the man's ass out the house. 
I know you can see this stuff. So everything comes back around. But the, the devil knew that the spirit rests on the Israelite men. Let's get um Malachi 2 and 7. He knew that the priest's lips are resonant in the sons of Jacob. Yeah, he got it. Yeah, he got it. Okay. It's the book of Malachi chapter 2, verse 7. Yep. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. Say what? For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. So you're disqualified if you've got a man in the house. Many of you women know what I'm talking about. I grew up with a mother like that. The government workers would come by and inspect the house. And if a man was found in there, she would be disqualified for these benefits of these pimps, Esau. Read that again, Babakasha. Malachi chapter 2, verse 7 from the top. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. Yep. And they should seek the law at his mouth, for he is the messenger of Yahweh of hosts. Let us cut them off from being a nation. So we got to shut the mouth of the priests, prophets. We got to tell them they're just black. They're just Negroes. Why you think a lot of our women, we grew up hearing what? Men ain't shit. You see, I know you can see how this comes together. So they were indoctrinated with a replacement philosophy by this devil. He instilled within your mind that the Israelites are nothing. And Eve being a, an individual looking to survive, she's just going to look and see who's in power. So it was easy for her to be seduced by the serpent, a proverbial snake in the grass. What's that term? She's hypergamous. So she has an instinct to survive. Who's the most dominant economically? You see? So she was lured by this man's appeal, his allure, because of his power. I got a cousin, she hooked up with a uh, big time drug dealer in the early 90s in Newark, New Jersey. That's where I'm from, Newark, New Jersey. She was attracted to this man driving the damn, I don't know, a damn Mercedes Benz. He was decked out with gold rings. He had big necklaces around his neck. So she saw that and was attracted to this man's power but he would beat her up every day down there. And she would be crying to us, what you want us to do? You're still laying with this man. But Eve is hypergamous. She's attracted to that power. Let's go here to Revelations 11. Come, this is the book of Revelations chapter. Let's do it, bro. Yes. Revelation chapter 11, verse seven. And it reads, and when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them. Why is this a beast? Well, first of all, it's led by the red man. He is a savage, immoral, unethical man, a villain. When you look at in Isaiah chapter 32, he's described as a churl, which goes back to the word villain or niggard. So it's talking about Esau, a, a vile creature. You see, and he's inculcated all the other ancient worships from Canaan, Egypt, Greece, Rome, Assyria. See that? The Persians. So this place is Babylon the Great. It's paganism and idolatry on steroids. That's why it's a beast. Let's read that again, Bubba Kasha. Once more, verse 7. And it reads, And when they shall have finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. Verse 8. And it reads, And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. So the Israelites were in a dead state of being cut off from our lover or our savior our father from our husband so we were a walking dead in the land of america so we were in a dead state knowledge wise and not having the breath of life which is this wisdom we also lost the name which is huge 
Imagine being kidnapped, knocked upside the head, and driven from the East Coast. You wake up one morning from your deep sleep and you're in the West Coast. You don't even know your captors. Now he's feeding you water, wine. He's cooking a steak for you. So you begin to fall in love with your captor and cut off from our husband. We don't even know the name of him anymore. So we're looking to the man that stole us to console us. That's a bad state when this devil took us. Where also our Lord Yahweh was crucified. So our husband was crossed out and we were given a false image. A golden retriever with blonde hair and blue eyes. Come on. In verse 9, and it reads, and they of the people, and kindreds of and tongues, mm -hmm. and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half. Yep. They shall not suffer their dead bodies to, to be put in graves. So this conglomeration of all kingdoms, Canaan, Rome, Greece, Egypt, many of them knew who we were, but they kept silent. And it just acted like they didn't know. They enjoyed opening up their businesses and seeing Jake coming in there spending money at the gas station, the local convenience stores, ran by the East Indians, Elon, ran by the sons of Ishmael, the, the Ishmaelites. They enjoyed us being in an ignorant state, eating pork, shrimp, crab, and lobster, making Moab rich. Exactly. Hurry up, I go home. You people still. <laughs> exactly. I, I go watch them. <laughs> Eating them cat and dog chopped up. Talking about that's chicken sunay. That's cat and dog. The hell is this? Exactly. <laughs> you hurry up, I go home. <laughs> <laughs> and once they put that sauce on there, we eat that, that damn shit. Exactly. Abomination. And stay at the bottom. Talking about we don't know why the Lord ain't hearing our prayer. So now it's time to get cleaned up and turn away from these abominations and look into our lover for assistance, sustenance. Come on. Verse 10. And it reads, and they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them mm -hmm. and make mirth and shall send gifts one to another. So the gifts for the Israelites in the slave trade, we became commodities. Our women were traded for wine. Our young boys were traded for sex toys. The caveman loved young boys. That's the caveman, the devil, Esau, Edom. He don't even like his wife. So this man is a savage. 700 and damn 50,000 children missing every year. Stop eating the damn Deanna sausage and potted meat. They're telling you there's a beef shortage, but they're giving you human flesh to eat. Millions go missing a year around the world, mostly women, women and children. 750,000 adults, uh, no children, go missing in America. The other 350,000 or so are um, adults. Okay, come on. Because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. Who are these two prophets? Northern kingdom Israel and southern kingdom of Judah. Right. Verse on. 11, yep. and it reads, and after three days and a half, 350 years. Come on. The spirit of life from God, our power entered into them. The Holy Spirit is reviving us. We were knocked upside the head, given amnesia, kidnapped, driven far away from our home. And the caveman gave us a photo that he photoshopped with us holding this nigga and spouting. And he's talking about, I'm your husband. And then he's feeding us soup to help us recover. So he's licking our wounds, so to speak, nursing us up. And we think this man love us, but he's the devil that the Bible speaks of. Right. And on. they stood upon their feet. What are we doing in these last days? Stood upon their feet. Come on. And great fear fell upon them which sought him. So through the spirit of life and wisdom, 
we came to our senses, so to speak, and remembered who we are. That's right, that's right. So we started to wake up and stand in great numbers and great boldness around the world on every continent except Antarctica. The Israelites are standing up, all right, boldly in the face of our oppressors. Come on. Verse 12. And it reads, yep. and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. These nuclear missiles are going to strike. And we're going to hear in the ancient Paleo-Hebrew tongue, what? Come, come up, up hither. hither. Come on. And they ascended it up to heaven in a cloud. The so-called UFO, the great fathership, is going to descend upon the earth. And the Israelites elect are going to be saved from the carnage and massive destruction on the earth, preceded by nuclear missiles. And their say. enemies beheld them. Thank you. Who are these enemies? The other nations are going to see the glory, the salvation of the Israelites around the world. We got something to keep. It's the book of Isaiah 26, starting off at verse 20. Come, my people. Isaiah 26, verse 20 from the top. Yep. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. Wait a minute, what do we do when we get married? What do we do when we get married? We go into the marriage chamber. Now this, this is heavy. So if you're not clean, donning white robes, repentant, you're not married, ready for the marriage. We still got people want to go back and forth with the apostles. How in the hell are you going to argue with a establishment that's already built and you join it when it's about them three fourths of the way finished? You got to be out of your mind. I don't like the parameters of this building, this temple here. Who did this? You're not going to make it. We still got Jake's doing that. This construction started long before you came along and you're in the wrong garments islam comedic hebrew christian what is a hebrew christian you're mixing christianity with the doctrine read that again Bubba kasha god it's the book of isaiah 26 verse 20. uh-huh come my people <laughs> enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee hide thyself as it were for a little moment yep until the indignation be overpassed. Beautiful. Verse 21. For behold, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth also shall disclose her blood and shall no more cover her slain. See that? So the bride is being saved from the aggressor, Edom. This is absolutely amazing. So that fury and that wrath is from the husband, the most high, through the Hawashai. How would you feel you walk in, somebody's holding your bride and trying to sexually ass assault her? See, let's go to Revelation 21. Revelation 21, verse one. Uh-huh. And it reads, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away uh-huh and there was no more sea the old world under gross darkness where anything goes come on verse two yep and it reads and i jump so the holy city new jerusalem coming down from god our power out of heaven prepared as a bride adorned for her husband prepared as a what bride adorned for her husband so this is the bride the calmly and delicate daughter of Zion, redeemed out of distress, captivity, and donning the beautiful ornaments, and decked out with gold and silver, made white again, repented. You can't be a nigger waiting for the chariot smoking the black and white, black and mild. Not going to happen. Verse three, please. Verse three. Yep. And it reads, and I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, 
Did not Brother Amalfia Ice just read about that? That ancient Paleo Hebrew? Read it again. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Yup. Behold, uh -huh. the tabernacle of God, our power is with men. Let's go. And he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. His what? Be his people. His people are the Israelites. All right? That's it. How do we know that? Joel 2 and 27, please. And then we're going to go back to where you left off. The book of Joel <laughs> chapter 2, uh -huh. verse 27. Yep. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I am Yahweh, your power, uh -huh. and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. Did not this brother just read that the tabernacle of God is with me? That's right. Book of Kasha, again, please. Huh? Uh, Joel chapter 2, verse 27. Uh huh. And ye shall know yep. that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am Yahweh, your power and none else. That's beautiful. Yep. And my people shall never be ashamed. Now through the spirit, this is what? This is the patriarch being established on earth. Male rulership. No more broke back governors, pedophile mayors. No more weak child molesting them city councilmen. So the pedo queendom is destroyed the old world ushering in the dominant men from the patriarch of the 12 tribes under the tabernacle of david mighty men let's go back to revelations 11. revelation uh-huh chapter 11 <laughs> verse 13 and it reads in the same hour was there a great earthquake nuclear missiles come on and the tenth part of the city fell well, america's divided into 10 fema zones come on and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand a perfect death sentence for the offenders the oppressors were slain what seven thousand come on and the remnant were afraid yep and gave glory to the god our power of heaven. So there's going to be a remnant elect that is going to be saved. They're crying out in distress. They're tired of the pedos. They're tired of the manly, aggressive, damn Jezebel's wildebeest with wigs. They're tired of this crap. So these men are crying out in distress, living in the tent while she's got all her lovers running through her. And you're paying her from your damn campfire. Now, that's not righteous. The men are being kicked out, living in the woods, building a damn campfire to keep warm and paying his wife while she goes get ran through by her lovers. This kingdom is unrighteous. Verse 14. Yep. And it reads, the second world was past. World War II, come on. And behold, the third world come quick. Armageddon is going to finish this wicked kingdom off right. come on verse 15 yep and it reads and the seven angels sound and there were great voices in heaven saying the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our lord yahweh Bible some yahweh shot and of his hamashiach and he shall reign forever and ever beautiful that's beautiful see when we get married we say what holy matrimony all right through sickness and in health till death do us part or forever so we're married forever so the old world is passed away that's the death now we're in the resurrection so we died in adam let's go to romans 5 book of Kasha. we died in adam but are being resurrected through the house so this is a breath of fresh air or a new start in life, a fresh start. He's not going to remember the adultery with Moab eating cat and damn dog soup brulee, whatever the hell you call it. He's not going to remember the days of old when we went off and having our backs beat out by these other guys, these other lovers, Islam, Kemetic. 
the fat man with a damn bone going through his nose. We were bugged out. So we've been ravaged by all these different false gods and these other nations. So he's not going to remember that. We're going to be able to put on the white robe again, which represents purity or virginity, untouched. And it's a fresh start with our husband. We're going to go to uh, Romans 5, somewhere around, let's go to 13. So we all died in Adam. So we, we had to do what? We had to walk in the flesh just like the Savior did. So this is a gradual process of being regenerated and rebuilt towards Godhood. So we had to be brought low in order to be rebuilt up to a higher status. Come on. Romans. Yep. <laughs> Chapter 5, verse 13. And it reads, For until the Lord's sin was in the world, but sin is not imputed when there is no law. Yep. Verse 14, and it reads, Nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. See that? Death reigned from Adam to Moses. Come on. Even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. So we were born in iniquity. We were shaped in transgression or iniquity. So our surrogate mother was the mother of harlots, the daughter of Babylon. So we are shaped in iniquity. For we die in Adam. Read it again, Baba Kacha. Once more, yep. verse 14, and it reads, Nevertheless, death ran from Adam to Moses. Come on. Even over them that had not sinned after the similitude of Adam's transgression. Yep. Who is the fig of him that was to come. Who is the what? Fig of him that was to come. So Adam will come back as Yahweh Shai, the figure of him to come. I bet you the shaved head pastor with the baby face never taught that. Come on. Verse 15. Yep. And it reads, but not as the offense, so also is the free gift. For if through the offense of one many be dead, yes. much more the grace of the Most High, and the gift by grace, which is by one man, Yahweh Baba Shem Yahweh Shah. See that? I'm so, Marshall. So he is the mercy seat, that extension of the Lord's hand, Yahweh. So now we have a chance back to rekindle what we started out with. He's going to remember us when he carried us on his wings and delivered us out of the clutches or the grasp of the ancient Egyptian oppressors. So now we're placed back in good favor through the spirit so there had to be a shedding of blood or a perfect lamb sacrifice nobody owns a farm where we're able to do the perfect sacrifice and it's not sufficient anyway because jake was using the old way to go off i got my eyes on that man's wife so here's my lamb right here outside the door that's what jake was doing so the Most High said, I am weary of your burnt offerings. Jake was wicked as hell. Come on. Have abounded unto many. Wait a minute, have done what? Abounded unto many. So through the Spirit, we are abounding. See that? That's the Godhood I, I spoke about previously. I have said, ye are gods. So Adam was, yes, he, he was a God on earth, but we're going to be elevated to the status of the kings and priests. That's the tabernacle being built on earth. Come on. Verse 16. Yep. And it reads, and not as it was by one that sinned, so is the gift. For the judgment was by one that condemnation. Uh -huh. But the free gift is of many offenses unto justification. So although we fell by Adam, we're justified by the blood. So there's a redemption through the blood. The beloved Malak, the mafia, ice. Romans 3 and 22, Bubba Kasha. We're gonna, we're gonna finish at 25. Yep. That's the book of Romans, is it 3? Right, uh-huh, 3 and 25.
Romans chapter 3, verse 25. Whom the most high have set, set forth to be a appropriation through faith in his blood to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of the most high. To declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just, the justifier of him which believe, which believeth, Salakia, and Hamashiach, Yahushah. Where is boasting then, it is excluded by what law of works, nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. See, so this is a, a spiritual purge. This is a spiritual cleansing. So we're not justified by the deeds of the law. No man on the earth kept the law perfectly other than Yahweh Shai. King Ephesians 3 and 10, Psalm 61, please. Psalm 61 and 2. This is the book of Ephesians, uh -huh. chapter 3, verse 10. That's it. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manful wisdom of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shai. Yep. Oh. Come on. According to eternal purpose, which he purposed in Hamashiach Yahweh our Lord. That's the chief high priest rebuilding his church. That's right. So these are spiritual stones. The elect, come on. In whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Wherefore, I desire that ye faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. For this cause, I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord, Yahweh Shah HaMashiach, of whom the whole family in heaven and in and earth is named. Now this is heavy. The whole family in heaven and earth is named. See? So before I formed you in the womb, I knew thee. See? So the Lord is gathering together the essence of his dispersed spirit, the rebuilding of his church on the chief cornerstone of Yahweh Shai. So this is a spiritual re-establishment of the first church. Let's close out with that last one, 16. Ephesians 3 and 16. Come, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. Uh-huh. That he would grant you, mm. according to the riches of his glory, to be straightened with might by his spirit in the inner man. See? So that spirit discerns and strengthens all things. Why? Because it created all things in the first place. So this, this whole thing makes sense when the spirit is moving through us. I mean, did not the most high in the beginning create Yahweh Shai, which created all things? So he is assembling the disperse of the tabernacle of Zion in a nutshell. That's the rebuilding of the church. I pray thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So the spirit, which is wisdom, is rebuilding Jerusalem. Come on, let's go to Psalm 61. Psalms, chapter 61, verse 1. And it reads, Hear my cry, O power. Yep. Attend unto my prayer. Mm -hmm. Verse 2. And it reads, From the end of the earth, Will I cry unto thee? Where is that damsel in distress? From the end of the earth, will I cry unto thee? America, come on. When my heart is overwhelmed, mm. lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That's that great ship. See that? There was a great earthquake. And they ascended up into a cloud. Read that again, again King. Once more, <laughs> verse two, yes. and it reads, from the end of the earth mm. will I cry until thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Mm. Mm -hmm. Verse 3, and it reads, For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the end. I will dwell in the house of the Lord. Come on. Verse 4, Yes. and it reads, I will abide in thy tabernacle. 
forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Verse 5. Wait a minute, what is that covert of his wings? He's coming back with the angels and the great fathership. Yahweh Shai is going to crown the men of the tabernacle of David. Mighty men. Come on. Verse 5. Uh huh. And it reads For thou, O power, yep. has heard my vow. Has what? Has heard my vow. Come on. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fit. Did not Yahweh Shai say, Peter? Thou art Peter, who will sit on 12 thrones, judging the 12 tribes of Israel. That's the heritage that fear his name. The elect of the 12 tribes of Israel. We gotta take our time. Read that again, Bubba Kashaw. Once more. Yes. Verse five, and it reads, For thou, O power, hast heard my vows. Uh -huh. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that Fear thy name. Yes. Elect of Israel. Come on. Verse 6. Uh-huh. And it reads, Thou wilt prolong the king's life. Thou wilt what? Prolong the king's life. No, he's going to be put to death. Read it again. Thou wilt prolong the king's life. Come on. In his years as many generations. In many generations. Come on. Verse 7. Uh-huh. And it reads. Yes. He shall abide before God our power forever. Forever. Come on. Oh, prepare mercy and truth, which may preserve him. Ooh, let's go. Verse 8. Uh -huh. And it reads, so I will sing praise unto thy name. He's going to teach and preach and perform his daily vows. Let's Forever. go. Forever. For what? Forever. Ooh, let's go. That I may daily perform my vows. No, we're going to just take a month off or go on vacation in Thailand. For about six months. So you broke back men that put your hands or took your hands off the plow, you're off. He said daily vows. And that pertains to the house of the Lord. The tabernacle of David is being raised up. We're gonna close out right there and hydrate our voice. Oh, man. So all praises must face the east. Salakia. I'd like to give all praises to Yahweh, Ahashem, Yahweh Shai, Ahashem, Rakhak Kadash. Double honor and respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so. Standing out on the front lines, the battlefield, for Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad, regardless of what you look like. Right. It is the spirit that bear witness and the beloved ladies that are learning in meekness and humility and silence. Palm Yasharala and the Bad Babao. We got next, Lord willing. Shalom. Shalom. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> you got brothers that are sick teaching. You got, you got a bugged out meek man Sitting on the sideline complaining. I'm telling you. And doing nothing. Eating skittles and star wars. Yeah. <laughs> Pork rinds. Got shit. like three stomachs. Talking about he can't lose weight. What <laughs> the hell are you talking about? <laughs> oh, this is too much, man. Oh, that was a heavy lesson, man. Hey, man.